Hi everyone, this is April Cox, and this is Self-Publishing Made Simple Author Work Group. We are in week eight today, and this is our drop-in session. We have a very special guest speaker with us today in Brandon Walden. Welcome, Brandon. We're so happy to have you join us. Thanks for having me. Honored to be here with you guys. Okay. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about Brandon. We're going to start this meeting and it's going to be kind of just an author hangout with Brandon and it's an ask me anything session. So you can feel free as we go through to just type in your questions in the chat or take yourself off mute as we go so that we can make this a very fluid discussion and take the, the advantage of having this incredible gentleman with us today with a huge, vast amount of experience. So um, once we finish with our meeting with Brandon, for those of you that are in the author work group, you are welcome to stay and hang out with me. Um, I'm not nearly as engaging as Brandon, but I am here oh, come at on. 10 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. And I will be here to, for our normal drop-in session to help you with any of your project questions, your book issues, or if you just want to um, get some help with keywords or a Facebook ad, you name it. We'll, we'll do wherever, wherever the meeting takes us. So without further ado, this is Brandon's absolutely gorgeous family. Five girls. Brandon, <laughs> so much <laughs> trouble. Look, I get this everywhere I go. They are Every so beautiful. Yeah. The reason why I reached out to Brandon and what, um, what I got my attention originally, when I first started in the group, Brandon, I think, was just releasing this book, Seeds and Trees. Um, it is yeah. one of my favorites, and I took it down from my bookshelf in its place of honor. Um, <laughs> I love this book. I think it is... Yeah. Um, the, you know, you talk about the power of words and I have watched yeah. your, just how that, how it has soared to the top. And I've watched, mm -hmm. you know, kind of your ministry of, um, just, you know, the power of words, how they can change you. And, um, I've seen your book just constantly just bestseller, bestseller all the time. I'm actually mm -hmm. even tracking the ranks so I can see how it goes. Cause you are one of my favorite authors. So, oh goodness! I've been out of stock the past couple of days, so it's it's lower well, than normal, but I'm, I'm it's, still um, still kicking there. The book is wonderful. I love it. Thank I you. read, and my Thank grandkids you. love it. And and it was gave me an opportunity to really talk to them about mm -hmm. this important value. My my three year old granddaughter mm -hmm. doesn't get it, but I've got a sure. six year old and a four year old who really are mm -hmm. engaged with the story and the lesson of it. So oh, thank I. You. I love what you're doing. I think, you know, the success that you've seen, I, I'd love to be able to understand more about, you know, your best practices. So let me give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about yourself and your story sure. as, you know, your journey as an author. Um, yeah. And then, and then let's, you know, we can move into seeds and trees and, and kind of the story behind that as well. Yeah. No, thank you. And again, thanks for, having me i'm going to do my best to look at the camera which oddly enough on my um ipad since it's turned it's sort of off to the side so if i look this way and i look like i'm not looking at anybody it's because i'm trying to see you guys so i apologize if that gets weird um yeah so i'm like i said a south carolina native i was i was born and raised in south carolina uh, i met my wife um in south carolina when we were well let's see 12 and 13 years old um, she was older um, I was you know robbing the cradle if you will as they say uh, we've actually been best friends since um, high school and didn't date until our early 20s um, I it doesn't mean I didn't ask her out numerous times I actually asked her out hundreds of times um, but I was not really the best um, guy to date in high school I'll just say that um, she was wise enough to not date me and to just stay friends. Um, it preserved our friendship by not dating and ruining it. And uh, in our early 20s, we started dating and we've traveled the world together. Um, we've obviously got five daughters together. I get all of the jokes and the puns and the statements about having five girls. And yes, 
I tell everybody, everything you think about what my life is like is all true. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a lot of great stuff that most people don't realize. And my girls genuinely have changed me incrementally every single one. Um, my wife, I'll just say this as a, as a side, my wife said to me one day when we were having our third Sophie, um, and Sophie's like our, she's just, she's our everything. She's our little jokester and always making everybody really laugh. And um, my wife was pregnant with her and she said, you know, God must have really known what he was doing by giving you all girls. You're so gentle and so sweet and so kind with them and it's so patient. And I was like, Steffi, do you remember how much of an ass I was before we had girls? <laughs> I said, I'm not so sweet, not so gentle, not so kind. I was, I was just a guy. And um, like I said, it's become... Um, it's just been such a blessing having them. They're like meat tenderizers. Um, and our last, our most recent one, Royal, um, is the sweetest thing. She wears glasses because she's got the worst set of cross eyes I've ever seen in a little girl. And, um, but with or without her glasses, but especially with them, she's like the most endearing looking kid. Um, so my girls are genuinely, I tell people, like, they're really my inspiration. Um, the the real truth of that is that when I was in high school and then going uh, headed to college, I actually intended on being an art therapist. I was really gifted with visual arts, but I didn't want to just be an artist. I wanted to do something that would change lives. Um, and so I really thought heavily about art therapy and was really interested in that field. Um, but for a, a myriad of different reasons, right when uh, time came to make decisions on where I was going to go to school. I had scholarships and things for art. Um, I decided against going to school and I went and traveled and did some missions work overseas first. And in the process, kind of had a change of, of heart of maybe different ways I could help and I could serve. And if I'm really honest, like most of us on this call, I was also kind of running from what I really thought I was meant to do anyways. Uh, for a myriad of different reasons. I had been sexually abused as a child and I had never told anybody until I was in my early 30s and had a lot of pain, a lot of shame, a lot of uh, bad seeds that were sown in my life that had grown out of control. Um, and so midway through our marriage, um, I had a, about a breakdown and was in the middle of killing it in business and serial entrepreneur and I was kind of at the top and making stupid amounts of money and but nothing was was fitting filling the need and nothing was working on the outside everything looked great everybody thought man this guy is so successful look at his beautiful family he's killing it on all, all sides and I genuinely just wanted to jump off a bridge and um nothing nothing helped nothing could move the the needle if you will um so in the process of me, and I'll just get really personal so everybody knows kind of where I'm coming from, what this is all really about for me. But when I, I started my process of kind of inner healing, if you will, and going to the depths of the lies that I believed about myself and trying to figure out why do I struggle with feelings like this? Why do I walk in rooms and suddenly feel like I'm not enough? And yet on the outside, I'm portraying some guy that is an extrovert naturally and can just talk to anybody and, I was a salesperson and I could sell, you know, me, but I, inwardly I just felt lost. And um, so I, I got a lot of counseling and therapy and I was meeting a life coach simultaneously. And I kind of told him my story for the first time I ever articulated, I was sexually abused. And, um, and when I did, I, I started having this breakthrough that is, it would take all night to share. I won't get into all the details, but in the process of that, I got about two years into my process of healing. And then one of our daughters came to my wife and I one night and shared with us that she had been sexually abused by someone we knew. And it like, it shattered and shook everything for us. It was like the greatest fear I could ever imagine being realized um, that one of my precious girls had been armed and anyway but especially like that and uh it, it was kind of one of those moments where you just kind of go like enough is enough like th this has got to end like whatever cycle of of pain and trauma that's in my family and in the history uh 
in my family as well. Like it's just got to end. It can't continue into my daughter's lives. And that honestly was the birthplace of Seeds and Treats. Um, I started writing that story months after my daughter came to us and told us her news. Um, it took three and a half years to officially publish the book and actually get it out there, and illustrations and marketing, and all that stuff. Um, but when I when I wrote that book, I I genuinely as silly or obnoxious as it might sound, I wrote that book believing that they could change the world and that if everybody would just speak with good seeds and share good seeds with children in their formative years that the world would change the world would be different and if we could teach children what to do with bad seeds when they do come to them um so you didn't, you didn't want that same feeling that you had to be something that your daughters would be facing no exactly i mean i really seeds and trees i kind of tell people when it came um that phrase was a phrase i'd never heard i'd never thought of the even the the metaphor if you will of seeds and trees um i was i was actually sitting in the back row of the church i was going to at the time and a friend of mine was preaching about something entirely different i felt so bad because i was completely zoned out <laughs> i had no idea what he was talking about but the inspiration for seeds and trees came in that moment i actually took out my iphone and wrote in the land of the king with especially young prince you love climbing trees and playing with friends and when I said that, and when I wrote that, I was like, oh, that's interesting. What's, what are these trees? And I was just writing, like, spontaneously. Mm -hmm. And then, it, then I scrolled down and I just wrote seeds and trees. And I thought, oh, yeah, all of our thoughts are like seeds, all of our, you know, and they become these trees. And, and I, that afternoon, I wrote about 70% of the book, at least in the first draft one, and shared it with my wife. She wept. I started crying because I we, we kind of suddenly realized, like, not saying that the writing was so exceptional, but that the story and what we were, what I was communicating really kind of almost became like a revelation for us in our own home of how to make it through it with our girl and how to love her well and to start speaking good words in her to, to shore up her foundation of, you know, of, her, of herself. And, um, and honestly, to this day, I mean, literally almost four years later, our girls still have conversations in our house where one of us, my wife or I, or one of the girls will say, Hey, was that a good seed that you just said, you know, and we use it in our house on a daily basis. It's, it's the way we communicate. So, um, yeah, that's more than maybe what all of you guys wanted to know, but just so you kind of understand who's sitting here, it's not just like some guy that set out to, I'm just gonna write books to make, to make money. Um, that was never the thought, but I was also simultaneously, um, a business guy that really thought about this like as a business like if I were going to do this how would we do it well how would we launch well how would we produce this how would we profit how would we you know make money and return money to investors if we needed it and all that stuff I treated it like any other startup so. wow thank you for the vulnerability and I mean we came here to hear your author journey and we got uh, mm -hmm. got to see a little bit of your heart there so I uh, hope so it's wonderful and that's, yeah. I think that's why the book captures me so much is because it does give us, it's, it's, you know, not, uh, it's a lesson. It's a beautiful story and it gives us an opportunity to really just do <coughs> it with, with our kids. Because, you know, whether you get to the point of, of talking about bullying or anti-bullying um, or just, you know, um, self-confidence it's like it, it it ties into yeah. so many different themes that we want yeah. for our for our children and for me for my grandchildren um, mm. I took a, a slide here and just kind of pulled the the different things from seeds and trees and you've got the seeds and trees here um, yeah. the the illustrations are just stunning yeah um, they're magical they're they're gorgeous um, how did you select your illustrator and you know what yeah. what kind of inspired the style of illustrations for you yeah so again as i shared a minute ago i i'm an artist i'm a visual artist and i'm a musician and kind of always been artistic in various ways my wife is also all of the books that we have in our own for our kids are beautiful we have a, a high value for the aesthetic of beautiful art and we want our girls to understand and to value um you know beautiful work and not just put anything in front of them 
especially when we're reading books, you know, I, we, we, we think of this as from a marketing standpoint, you know, we, we are marketing books for children, but we're marketing them to parents. And so for me, it's always a thought of like, well, what would I want to hold and look at with my kids for the next hour and um, your five minutes, whatever it is, and the, the time we're going to spend reading. And so our friends, um, some of my dear friends, Kevin and Kristen Howdeshell, they are, they're world-class artists. They've done stuff for every major publication on the planet I can think of. I could just start name dropping National Geographic and all kinds of New York Times and big magazines and movies that they've done movie posters for. And, um, they just, I knew them in Kansas City when we lived in Kansas City for about seven years. And um, when I first started writing this story, I was meeting with them about an entirely different thing and just kind of said, I got this idea for this kid's story. I don't know if it's a book, if it's just a poem. This is before I ever thought about publishing. And I mentioned it to them and they were both like, Brandon, we would, we would be honored to be a part of it. That sounds like the kind of thing we would do. And um, the style is all theirs. You know, their, their, their work is, is what it is. They have kind of their own aesthetic, if you will, um, that they've kind of created um, that's classic and modern and whimsical and all kinds of things. But um, we knew very early on that they were who I wanted to illustrate the book. Now, that came with a price, and I mean legitimately a sticker price. Mm -hmm. um, they were dear friends of ours, and their friends and family discount shocked me. I mean, literally made me about fall in my chair because I was like, oh, dear God, like I, I'll never be able to make a penny on this book. And, and it's so funny you know, how, our, how we change and how we develop and understand what actually makes this thing work, you know, with the books that we're, that we're promoting as far as children's books. And I, I, I was literally running numbers. You've got to realize when I, my first printing of 4,000 books, I printed those to, to launch in June, middle of June of last year with the intention and the business plan of selling those by the end of December. I thought if I can sell through 4,000 copies in six months, maybe there's something here. Um, I never knew or thought that it was even possible that I would sell 4,000 books in six weeks, which is wow. what we did. Uh, it, it, was, it was so far beyond me and so far off of the grid of my plan that I had no plan for what would happen if that did take place. And so suddenly, july the 19th of 2018 five six weeks later i was going wow we're out of stock and i don't have any money from amazon yet to even pay to reorder books and if i do reorder do i even have enough to reorder enough books if we if we have this kind of momentum and so we had to like go back to the drawing board and almost just restart the business altogether um but the illustrations alone i i just i cannot say enough to aspiring authors of children's books, picture books, think about it. I mean, they're picture books and picture is first in the description of that. And so the, everything in me says, you know, it's worth raising money. It's worth waiting. It's worth doing a Kickstarter. It's worth investing. It's worth saving, selling, whatever you got to do to make it professional and to provide quality illustrations. These illustrations, I know hands down, um, are selling my book continually. I have, I can't tell you the countless messages I've received. I mean, literally hundreds of messages over the past year from people that just say, I saw your book organically on Amazon and just bought it not knowing what it was about because it's so pretty, just to cover. I have friends here locally, people I've met at coffee shops that see a book sitting on a counter or, or the table I'm sitting at that just say, what is that? And I'm like, oh, it's this book I wrote. And they're like, how much is it? And they don't even know what it's about. They just buy it. And, and that happens all the time. And it's, it's truly just a testament to Kevin and Kristen's ability and their skill and their, the, the quality of it. So they're, they're my favorites. Um, they're actually illustrating another book for me right now um, that we've, we finished the manuscript on a couple of months ago. And it's equally beautiful. It's entirely different in some ways um, because Seeds and Trees is actually part of a series I'm writing with three books. Um, and this other book came kind of in between me releasing that series, um, actually through another a publisher that contacted us. I've, I've told the story in our group a little bit. But um, so that book I'm doing is actually kind of off the, off the track that I was on. And I wanted to use Kevin and Kristen 
again, but I also wanted it to look uniquely different from seeds and trees. Mm -hmm. And so they're doing, they're doing that. They're providing just beautiful illustrations for it. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, they're great friends. But for those of you that are wondering, I, I don't, I would say this, I don't necessarily say this publicly, other people do that know this, but um, I mean, we spent $15,000 on the illustrations on this book. And when I, when I think about that now, I would have paid twice that because we've sold now over 25,000 copies in the past year. And no matter how powerful I might think the story might have been, I know without question that the illustrations have sold this book over and over and over and over again and will continue to for uh, prayerfully many years to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely is a keepsake book, and I put yeah. it in a special place on my shelf because I don't want the kids to rip anything. Or So yeah. I take it down for special readings, and then we put it right back on the shelf so nothing mm. bad happens to it. Um, Thank you. Do you. Did you also have any other type of uh, media attention or anything else that drove sales or helped mm. to, do you think it was word of mouth that helped to spread and make it such an, an amazing seller for you? We, we have kind of like a, I'm trying to think, um, I'd say there was kind of like a three-pronged approach to our, our release. One was, um, I mean, I don't want to speak disparagingly against Kickstarters. I, there's lots of people that have had ridiculously successful Kickstarters. We, we had a successful Kickstarter, but to be honest with you, the impact it made on our launch wasn't nearly what I would have hoped it would have been. It, we, you know, we pre-sold, you know, a couple hundred books or whatever it was. Um, and we raised some money that we were able to use towards the printing. But um, it wasn't like it built some massive base. I, I'm, not, I'm not a professional Kickstarter guy. That's, that's not my skill set. Um, what I am is a thoughtful guy regarding who, who do I visualize holding this book that I'm creating. And so a year before our illustrations were even done. I was doing research on like mom blogs and homeschool moms and teachers and where do they hang out and how do you reach them and how do you contact them and where are they, what hashtags do they use on Instagram and all that stuff. So I was kind of calling together all this data of whenever we're ready to launch, I'm just going to do this big blast to all these kinds of people, not knowing really what was going to happen as a result. But I knew when I first got the first illustrations, people aren't going to complain about how beautiful this book is. They're going to love that. So I knew that that would be a selling point, which might help us get some attention or get people to repost or share things. Um, the message behind the book, I felt like was, was strong enough that it would, it would matter. And I thought the story was relevant enough as far as something that would kind of stand the test of time. Um, that it wasn't just like a, there's a lot of books right now that I won't say anything about disparaging about them, but there's a lot of books right now that are on trend and, and they will be for right now. And maybe a year from now, there'll be a new thing. That's the new thing. And I wasn't interested in doing that. I'm not, I wasn't trying to write a book that was like, Oh, the big cool thing right now is purple elephants. So I'm going to write books about purple elephants. I'm, I'm just not interested in doing that. Um, so our, our initial marketing when we were a couple months out from launch, and had illusions to share, were mostly on Instagram. We shared a ton of um, stuff. I sent a lot of DMs to people that never responded. I mean, most of them did not respond, if we're honest, because they weren't following me, and so a lot of those messages don't even show up. But I sent a lot of messages to people that agreed to post or to review or to share it. Most of those people weren't like massive followings, but some of them had somewhat substantial followings. Um, 10,000, 12,000, 20,000 people. We had a few people like that. And then the rest of them were just people that thought, well, this person might not have a massive following, but they have really great engagement. And so if they have a thousand followers, they've got 50 to 100 comments on all the posts that they do. Clearly people are paying attention to what they're doing. Um, and so I sent a lot of books to those people. Um, that, was, that was one. That was one kind of, of the prongs. The second was... Uh, which was maybe even more intentional than anything else I did was I had read enough about Amazon ads to know that they were potentially a powerful indicator of whether or not our book was going to rise and, and we were going to get, you know, get kind of in their algorithm and stuff. So I did a lot of, was watching tons of videos online. Uh, I forget the guy's name, Kindlepreneur guy. Um, Dave Chesson, he was our speaker yeah. last week. 
Okay, yeah, so I watched a ton of his stuff. Um, ironically enough, I have not used his service, um, which is so silly to say now in retrospect, because I probably could. I'm actually going to sign up for it for my the next book I'm doing, um, which maybe we'll talk about later. But the I watched a lot of his free content and just sort of like, gosh, there's clearly this ad thing is, is a thing. Um, and so in when we launched on June the 12th, my ads started running at the beginning, the first week of May. I didn't even know how to pre to, to set up a pre-order. And so you couldn't even buy my book. You couldn't even like, it wasn't even available to purchase. It was just like, I was marketing this thing that's coming out there. Um, and we spent um, that first month about $2,600 $2, or twenty eight, almost a hundred dollars a day on ads for a book that wasn't even available technically. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that, but at the same time, I completely recommend that. Um, because we got enough impressions and started to get enough attraction and a lot of people coming to our to our site or product page that Amazon started to notice. And however their algorithm works, they started to like me um, and like seeds and trees to where they'd start putting it in front of other people. I've got so many comments from people that have written me on Instagram or Facebook and said, hey, you know, I got an email from Amazon about your book. I, you know, they must have thought I would like your book. And it was kind of getting recommended to people mm. at the early part of the early part of the launch. Um, and so the only thing I can think of is it had, it had to have everything to do with how much we were paying to get things out there. Um, again, by the time Amazon sent me their first PO, which was, you know, like 86 books or something sent to 4,000 different warehouses right. initially yeah. is what it was. I thought, okay, well that it confirmed my thought of, well, this is going to take a while. However, the next PO was like 986 books. And then the next one was 1,800 books. And then we were out of stock almost. Um, so I, I highly advise understanding and cracking the code on the Amazon ads. And anybody that's skilled in that space, if, if, and I know you are as well, April, you, you'd understand. It's, it's well worth uh, the investment of time figuring it out um, and spending the money to to kind of blast the the third thing which i think had a lot to do with the success of the book was launching a free kindle giveaway um, right prior to the launch of the book so for the three days prior to the book being available to purchase in stock at, at amazon um, we we did a, a three-day giveaway and i created a special facebook group for that for the seeds and trees ebook giveaway invited hundreds of people to it. I messaged friends. I messaged everybody I knew. I sent tons of emails. I sent so many messages on Facebook that I kept getting shut down and messenger from sending so many messages. Oh. Um, and I would wait a couple hours and I'd send like 150 more. And I literally, I, I, I knew that that was key. Um, so we got in those three days about 800 downloads of the book, um, which, you know, for it being free, like that was great. At the same time, it was I didn't really have an expectation of how many we would get. So we, right. that, that helped tremendously because we got out of that about 30 reviews. Um, so the moment the book was live, there was already 30 reviews on the book. And that was, that was a benefit. That's a huge help for anybody yeah. that's selling the book. Um, so I, I don't, I don't want to say like I had that idea before anybody else. I think I was the first person in the group to test and kind of post that idea. Um, and now other people have done it much more successfully than I did um, in, in, in you know, net 50 or 100 reviews or something of that sort or thousands of downloads. Um, well, I think it's amazing because when you first got started, you were talking about the success of the book, be, you know, that the illustrations really helped drive the success. But what I'm hearing, yeah. when I hear you talking about it, I'm hearing an awful lot of preparation and into the mm -hmm. launch that you yeah. really, and it sounds like thousands of messages went out, that you spent a lot of time reaching out right. to people whether and, and researching ahead of your, of your launch the right people yeah. to be able to connect with. So we talk a lot in this group about building your author platform and building an email list and being yeah. able to connect with influencers and really build the buzz around the book. But yeah. this is... You're, you're probably the first speaker that we've had that really talked about that whole thing and how that has really catapulted 
and, and then the book stands on its own, but you've got to get it there first, right? Getting, yeah. having a wonderful book that nobody really sees is, is, you know, it, it just doesn't go very far. So it sounds like all of these efforts that you had really do, did help to catapult and get it there. And then it stood on its own merits once it, once it rose to the top for sure. Thank you. And, and yeah, that's, it's definitely true. I don't want to belittle any of those efforts. There was, there was a lot of plan and a lot of effort and a lot of money spent in that process. Right. Um, you know, the, I probably, it's, it's funny, uh, to this day, and this is a, a confession for the group, um, I still have a unfinished list of people who want me to send the book to them to review from last year. Wow. And that literally, because when I, people would start finding it, other homeschool moms or, or these kind of mom blog, you know, Instagram people would find it and would message me like, hey, I'd, I'd love to do a review. And to be honest with you, the first six weeks of our kind of launch and what happened, it, it disrupted everything. And I wasn't prepared admin wise or even just in my own, you know, how I'm going to run this. Because I, I didn't think this was going to be a business that was going to take over everything else I was doing, but it actually did. It, I mean, I ended up having to walk away from another company I was at that I was doing a lot of consulting with because I realized, oh my gosh, this thing's kind of taking on this life of its own, which is great because I've never done anything in my life I was more fulfilled doing, um, but I wasn't prepared for it. And so um, I, I was constantly playing catch up and then I was trying to, to figure out how we were going to do our next run and when we did that and then kind of getting restocked with Amazon and then things were changing and as Amazon does regularly, just on a whim, there was all these different things I needed to adjust for. And to this day, I've probably got a, I know I have a Word document with a, or a spreadsheet that's got like 28 names of people that I still haven't sent a book to, mm. uh, that I, that I could, and I mean like tomorrow and I, it's, and, and maybe I should, maybe this is the, me holding <laughs> myself accountable by saying it publicly, but it's, it was just one of those, like, it's inconvenient. It doesn't, it's not, it's not how I want to spend my time. I want to just write and, and enjoy that. There's nothing better than waking up in the morning and checking and realizing you sold a hundred books, you know, the yeah. night before that they, those kinds of things that, that gets really, really comfortable. Um, but I also, I created this book and one thing when I realized what the potential was, and I honestly, I feel like we've just scratched the surface. It, it, it might sound crazy to say, so I hope it doesn't sound, haughty um it's I, I don't mean this at all I, I have continually steadily lowered my ad spend since i launched um so today like right now i have one ad set for twenty dollars like a twenty dollar max spend per day and i i have it paused and it's been paused for about a month um because i i didn't have books in stock we ran out of stock at the end of july where we we're getting more books i did some bad planning we had a a really great organic kind of thing happened with a teacher influencer who posted about the book um, on Instagram one morning. Uh, some of you in the group would have seen me post about this, but um, I had turned off ads the week prior because I was trying to to control how much stock we had to get through the end of July and into the middle of August, which is where we are right now. And our books are just getting back in stock at Amazon. I had I thought I had enough inventory there to last that long if I didn't run ads and sell an additional 10 or 12 or 20 books or whatever ads were generating. So in that process, I turned ads off and um, my rank kind of went down a little bit because I wasn't selling as many. It wasn't a big deal, but one of my friends texted me on a Saturday morning, I think, and it's like, man, your book is blowing up. And I, I just thought, Oh, he hasn't checked it in a long time. And so I was like, I said, yeah, it's doing great, man. I'm so excited. He's like, I've never seen it such a high ranking. And I was like, in my brain, I was thinking, well, he must have checked it a while because it's dropped 800 points or a thousand points, whatever it was. And, um, and I said, well, yeah, it's, it's done great. I said, we actually did. And I, again, I hadn't referenced it because I, I don't look at it every day. I said, um, well, yeah, it, it was actually higher than this. Like back last July at one point, we got up into the five seventies or something. And I was kind of thinking like, well, that'll, that'll shut him up. And he said, Brandon, your book's ranked 320. And I was like, no, it's not. That's ridiculous. I hadn't even known what had happened. This lady had posted about it, and she had 60,000 followers, and most of them were teachers, it seemed. And so I guess people were just buying the book in by droves. Wow. Because we literally had 
um, about 1,400 books in stock at the time at Amazon. And five days later, we went out of stock. And so we had four days in a row where we sold 300 books or 290 books. And as a result, the book kept going up. And it, I think the highest ranking was like 223 or something, which was just absurd to me because I never thought that was possible. Um, I genuinely thought if I can break into the 500, like above 500, that would be amazing. And Jay and I have had kind of this ongoing battle a couple of times to see who mm-hmm. could the highest. And Diane has had her book way up there as well. And um, But what was happening there was just sheer, like, wow, this I'm not doing this. I didn't have anything to do with this. If anything, this was going against my strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, super grateful for it. But But that tells me that, that's possible. It's possible to sell hundreds of books a day on Amazon mm-hmm. of just one title. And um, so I, I don't know. It's now the new goal is how do we get back there and, and, and see what that would look like. Yeah. How do you replicate it? That's, that's what all, yeah. of, all of the authors that are new and aspiring authors in our group want to know. How do we replicate that? So yeah. because I've been doing so much with, um, with chatting and asking all the questions, I'm going to stop for now and allow yeah. anyone else that has a question to jump on. Feel free to unmute yourself, or if you prefer, you can feel free to type the question into the chat. Um, and you can also make your video available if you want to while you're asking your question. Which would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, we want to see faces. <laughs> I can see Patty and Brenda. And like yeah. everybody, else is, everybody else is hiding. Anybody have questions or comments for Brandon? Brandon is Brenda. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, I can hear you great. My internet is really bad. So if I check out, just keep moving on without me. But I love no your worries. story. Oh, <laughs> I love your you. story because it's so genuine. And mm. I love that you're sharing it. And just that, that little bit, whatever the story is, I love that idea of sharing it. So that's where mm. I am with my daughter too. My daughter is 11 and she has written three little books And the Mm. best part about those books is that they are from her heart. And Mm. I want nothing more than just to share that story with others. So thank you for your inspiration. I'm so excited for you. And I hope thank you. Yeah, I hope to be up there with her with Mm. some good numbers at some point too. So thank you. Oh gosh, yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for those those words of encouragement too. And honestly, that I think one of the greatest gifts that we can give our kids is our support. Um, and, you know, one on a, on a business note, but a personal note, when I started the company um, to my wife and I started this company, we, we didn't tell our daughters initially, but we gave them equity in the company. Um, and so my five kids now, now five, it was four at the time, but my, my five girls each have 6% equity in my company. So there's 30% of it is given to them. Um, and the funny thing is, is you now my oldest, you know, all the girls know now we can talk them later on, but my oldest says, so daddy, when you sell one book, what is that? How much money do I make? <laughs> you know, it's like, it was so funny. She got really excited. She just turned 13. So now she's thinking about money. Um, but it, it was so funny. I was like realizing like, even that was, I, I've got enough business savvy to think, gosh, how could I create a legacy for my family? I could just build this business around this book or I could truly give it to them and try to build it with and for them. And so my kids are learning a lot about business. They, I feel really uh, vested in this more than just like a casual thing I'm doing because I know that it really does have a long-term impact on their future, not just because I'm their dad and what I might want to provide or not, but because I'm literally setting money aside for my kids' future with this. So um, I just encourage you, Brenda, to really consider it um, the honor of that, but also to consider it a business and to think of what can we do business-wise strategically to help it be a success and, and to create a foundation where it can actually, it can actually stand and, and it can survive and it can thrive. Um, because we, too many of us, I think, and I, I doubt that anybody in this group are these types of people, but in the Facebook group that a lot of us are part of, it's often that I feel like there's a tendency to just throw something against the wall and hope it sticks. And but that doesn't work in any kind of business. It, it's just not wise. It's not good stewardship of your time, your heart, your money, your resources. And so 
and taking the time to to craft something beautiful with your kid and and to think of like, well, what could we do to launch this so that we can, they can actually get the encouragement of seeing something be a success or as a young child. Oh my gosh, like what a gift that would be. What a gift that would be. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. We hope to we hope that Angelina will come and speak one day. Yes. Uh, definitely. <laughs> She's busy today, but yeah, everything you said rings true, rings true. And mm. we definitely have set up what we're doing as a business from the very, very beginning, even yeah. before we knew what we were doing, that was the intent. And my goal That's for awesome. both my daughters is to give them something to work from. So if they wanted, yeah. they could build their own business. This is me passing yeah. it on to them and yeah. do whatever they want with it. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Can I, I'll just say this one little aside to that too and this is just a saying that I have what I've said in my home um, my wife and I realized a couple of years ago right before launching the book we were making some really big changes in our the function of how we were going to live as a family and I, I looked at my wife and I said you know my when I was growing up when I was in my early 30s my dad sat down with my brother and I who my, I have an older brother that's seven years older than I am and he sat us both down and he said guys I've been working at this business for 25 years, almost 30 years. I'm nearing retirement, and I just really want to give it to you guys. Now, what was sad is my brother and I both looking at each other and going, and neither one of us really wanted my dad's business. We had no interest in architecture. My dad was an architect. He had built this business on something he loved and he enjoyed, and he thought he was building it for us. Um, I, I tell people what we build for our kids is not what matters. What we build with them is what matters. Right. And so I, I just really encourage you to, to build it with your child. Um, you know, my kids were heavily involved in seeds and trees. My, you know, I'll, I'll give you a few minutes. So there's a, um, I've got the copy here. There's one of my little paperback versions. Um, there's, there are so many things I could point to elements in the book. But there was this one, one just funny thing, because even with our illustrators, as great as they were, there's this one page here, which um, when the friend is kind of introduced um, and, and sitting with the prince, um, the prince is here carving a little horse, right, um, out of wood. Well, originally, um, our illustrators, not to any fault of their own, had him carving like a little bird or owl or something. And um, one of my girls saw the picture and said, Daddy, why is he cutting up that bird? And suddenly <laughs> we realized, like, oh, it's, it's a wooden bird. Oh, but she thought it was, oh, man, I got to call Kevin and Kristen. So I called her. I was like, hey, can we make this something? Make it something else. I joke and say, like, even things like that, our kids were involved in all these decisions. My girls picked out the color of the prince's shirt on the cover. They wanted it red. It was originally, like, a bluish color. And they wanted it red. So okay, make it red. You know, uh, there was so there was there was even on the even on a basic level there was that kind of idea of well, how do we get include them in the process and 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 honestly like strategically, red was a much better color yes, <laughs> for the cover. Yes. <laughs> it worked so much better with everything. So it's like and yeah. they have such great ideas. Yeah, our kids are brilliant. So, so I have a, a question from Alicia. Alicia, are you able to yeah. chat? Hi there. Hey. Thank you hey. so much for sharing with us. This has been great. Oh, great. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, really. I really am so grateful. I was wondering if you wanted to share any details about your upcoming book. Oh, what boy. Um, so I have two. Well I have, well, I have like 10, if we're honest. But I'm not like, I'm not like Diane. I can't get on a plane and finish a book overnight on a freaking plane i'm so jealous of that lady um i hope she watches this and if she does then she'll understand um so i have two i have two books that i'm that are in process officially right now one is another children's book um it's being illustrated right now um is that the one you're referring to alicia or the other one? yeah oh I, that's okay. the one i was referring to but i'd love okay. to do anything really okay well so i got contacted last fall um, by a publishing company in, um, uh, I think they're based out of Pennsylvania, I think. Um, they had found my book through a, a church that is actually where I live, a local church. I think they had, one of their people had come to visit, bought a copy of my book here at the church. Um, the church has been kind enough, you know, and I, I never 
I would have never thought about my book selling in a church um, per se. I mean, the message was encouraging and uplifting and stuff, which I, I figured it, it could fit, but it wasn't, it was never part of my strategy. However, this church has a fairly massive online presence. Um, and since I'm local, they were really interested in selling it there in the, in their, in their church office or their church bookstore and they have an online website presence. So anyhow, someone from this publishing company had come through and saw my book, bought a couple copies, took it back to the office and said, Hey guys, look at this. And, um, I got the sweetest email from the head of the publishing company. It was this really heartfelt, um, not a, not a, not a sales pitch. I mean, it was, it's hard to say this because I, not that this is anything to brag about. Like I've, I've received probably 10 emails like this from publishers. And I say that with very loose quotation marks um, that since I launched and since the book kind of did what it did, I've got tons of offers of, we want to publish seeds and trees. We want to publish seeds and trees. We want to, and it's like, I, I don't need you guys at this point where we've already invested all this money and now I want to reap the benefits of it. Um, so I, I kind of drafted this standard kind, not interested message. Um, but this one came through and it was totally different. Um, the opening of the email was, Brandon, we, in a moment like this, we would normally say, we would love to talk to you about publishing seeds and trees, but clearly you don't need our help. I think we might need yours though. And, and it was such a humbling thing to think I was, you know, four months, three months into the launch of seeds and trees. And this publisher was saying, Hey, we've got this author. He's a very well known author um, in the Christian books realm. And we've done a couple of children's books, versions of his books before they've never really gone so well, but his books sell tens of thousands of copies annually. And they felt like there was something there. And they just basically said, would you be willing to write a children's book version of, of one of his books that just launched? Wow. And, and I'll be honest with you. Um, I cried. I read the email and I just absolutely cried. I just thought, this is an amazing opportunity. I can't even believe this is happening for me. Yeah. And what did I do to deserve this? And all that stuff. I mean, it was just really overwhelming. Because um, I, I knew of this pastor and I, I knew his kind of, if you will, his, the impact he has kind of globally. And I thought, oh, wow, this, this could be a complete game changer for me. Wow. So um, needless to say, I... I, I walked upstairs, I'm telling you maybe more than you want to know, but I walked upstairs with the computer with tears in my eyes um, and put the computer down in front of my wife. And I was like, you've got to read this. And she's like, what's wrong? And she literally immediately started crying thinking <laughs> I just got really, really bad news. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not bad. It's not bad. Just, please, just read this. And she read it and she did the same thing. She's like, Brandon, what is happening right now? How in the world is this, this happening? And um, it was just, it's such a gift. It's such a gift. So, um, that book that's coming out, it'll be out, uh, the illustrators are in the process of, of doing it right now. We actually, how, I don't know how many of you are at the stage of launch or in process, but our illustrators do this process called a dummy book. I don't know if that term is familiar with everybody in the group or not. Yeah. Um, but in, in, in our case, we, we spent a lot of time developing some characters and getting color and palette decided. Um, and then they sent me just actually last week, uh, the first look at like a dummy book of the book. Actually, I don't, is it possible for me to share screen with you? I would love that. Let wow, see we if, get an exclusive. Let me like, no, no, literally no one has seen this guys. Um, <laughs> but I want to see if I share content. Yeah, here we go. All right, so can you see this? Mm-hmm, yeah. You can see the screen yes. at this point? All right, so this, as you can see on here, there's a couple of things that are more developed than others. Obviously, the manuscript is all done, but this is kind of our illustrator's sketch process. Um, obviously, the castle of this particular kind of seaside village is, is kind of well described and in detailed, but essentially what this story is, um, after meeting with the pastor um, who's, who I'm writing this book essentially for, um, we discussed what he wanted it to be about. And because I'd written a book about a prince already, I wasn't really too keen on going this whole royal route, but that's actually what he wanted. And so we had to really make sure we could distinguish this from the seeds and trees. So um, in, in this story, uh, the, the, the quick 
kind of picture of it. What you're seeing here, where you see the king's way of life, that's the title of the book. Um, this is actually the title page of like, so it's not the cover, but when you open the book, this will be what you'll see. Um, the story actually opens in kind of a sad moment. The king in this village has actually passed away. And the two sons, the older brother and the younger brother, are both faced with the, like, wow, we suddenly dad's gone and now one of us has to lead. Um, so the where you see kind of these color palettes, these, you know, orangish color and pinks and stuff, these are sort of like what the ultimate palettes are going to be for the book it's much more bright and vibrant than seeds and trees is mm -hmm. um and stylistically this one spread that you should see can everybody see the blue spread yes okay so that one's the only one that's kind of fully developed um we wanted to do something that was more exaggerative um and kind of fantastical if you will um so we have um in this case the the two brothers in this story are quite different. One's a really sweet kid and one's not so sweet, if that could be said. And um, so we wanted to show the difference between the two of them. And Kevin and Kristen being brilliant like they are, they said, well, why don't we actually show the difference by creating distance? And um, so they're sitting at this elongated table and, mm -hmm. you know, quite far apart. Um, in the book, the one of the central themes is this um, compass here. I wish I could turn it, but the compass shows you north, south, east, west, but it also has on it go uh, yes, no, go fast, go slow in reference to north, south, east, west. The compass of this book is kind of indicative of wisdom and the boys seeking this compass for how are they supposed to live, what are they supposed to do in any given moment. Um, and as it's ironic, actually sitting with the pastor talking about the theme and the way we, we could tell a story with the book. Uh, I said, hey, is there some kind of emblem that you feel would be powerful that could be like something that's um, emblematic, like with seeds and trees, obviously the seeds and the trees are important. And since the book is called The King's Way of Life, maybe we could do something with direction. And that's all I said. And he's like, how about a compass? And I was like, yeah, like north was a yes, south was a no, east was go fast. West was go slow. And when I said that, it just kind of popped out. And the pastor was like, yes, 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 like that. <laughs> so um, in this book, again, different from Seeds and Trees, there's a lot of animal characters that kind of participate in the story along with the, um, with the human characters. And we don't explain that in the book. It's just the way it is. <laughs> we, went, we just kind of wanted to, um, to try something kind of, fun and more youthful than seeds and trees um, seeds and trees is is for an upper elementary at my kind of average age this although the writing is similar um we did try to keep it a little bit more simple words as far as the the words we use but it's also um just more fun and free with these animal characters kind of in there but anyways uh, we'll kind of scroll through the rest of it but this here, this rule like a servant, serve like a king, lifting up others is the best thing, is kind of the motto of the book. Um, wow. It's the way that it's the way that the king um, taught his sons to be, and the younger brother um, actually takes that as his kind of way to live, and his older brother doesn't. Um, and so they have kind of um, the older brother runs off in the story and doesn't take his rightful place as king. And the younger brother, the younger prince, actually has to step up and become king. Um, and uh, one of the things, one of his first orders of business, you can see in this spread here, is him calling the chief jeweler and giving everybody in the kingdom one of these special compasses that his, get, his dad gave him so that everybody can have access to wisdom and, um, and rather than kind of lording over them and um, whatnot. So... Yeah, it's, this has been beautiful. The, it does end on a good scene. The older brother comes back and the, uh, the younger brother gives him a, a, you know, a new compass. And, um, but yeah, so that's, that's the new story. Let me, um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Let me see so I can get back to our, um, back to our call. Did that, did that do it? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Did everybody see oh. that? Thank oh. you for sharing that. Oh my gosh, oh, what a stunning, 
so stunning. Wow, yeah, I love it's, it. It's so fun. Um, Kevin and Kristen are marvelous. And um, just like Seeds and Trees, guys, there's a, there's a moment in Seeds and Trees where I had written a part that really mattered to me. It was very important to, to say, but I'd never thought about how to display it. Um, but this scene here in Seeds and Trees is kind of like a really pivotal moment. If you are familiar with the book, you would, you'll know what I'm referencing. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, this, there's a part of the book here where it says, you know, many dark roots had tunneled so deep that it took them a while to dig underneath. Part of this was to really try to illustrate the hard work of getting rid of the roots, the bad roots in our lives, the bad thoughts, the bad lies that we believe. And I was, I was saying something about tunneling underneath a good tree, but I had no idea how they would show it. And when they, when they came up with this, I just thought, oh my gosh, guys, that's so powerful. It's, it's unlike anything I would have ever visualized. It was so emblematic of mm -hmm. the moment at hand. And I didn't realize, I, I was sitting down with them and my wife was looking at this with me. This is her favorite uh, part of the book. And she said, Brandon, look at the friend who's holding up this from not crushing him. And I thought, oh, wow, I, I was just seeing her carrying the bad stuff out. Right. But my wife was like, no, she's actually holding the whole thing together. If she moved, the whole thing would collapse on him. And if any of you guys have done any inner healing or heart work um, about old childhood stuff or trauma or therapy, anything like that, you'll know that without some support and that, that you can actually get buried in the process. Um, and and I've, I've done that myself a couple of times and kind of needed to come up for air and say, I'm, I'm, I'm dying here. Um, so it was just beautiful. They're, the way they, they visualize things is it's why you pay what you pay for their work. It's, it's phenomenal. Right. It's amazing to have that kind Thank of partnership you. where you're oh, able yeah. to voice your thoughts and have someone else visualize and pull that together. So we yeah. kind of, we have, you know, a variety of illustrators available to us, many of which, um, you know, want us to document every single thing that's in our minds and yeah. others that say, you know, uh, when I worked with Len Smith, for example, um, I, I gave him kind of, you know, some guidelines with my characters as far sure. as what they looked like because they were my family, but he came back with a lot of, of, you know, the vision for the book and the illustrations yeah. as well. So I think that's amazing. And when you can give, when you have an illustrator that's that skilled and you can give them some leeway, I think it really makes the book that much better. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, I'll, I'll share this just to, to, to maybe, you know, I was going to say illustrate that point and pun intended, I guess. Um, when I first started, because I'm a visual artist and I had the artistic kind of mind that I did, um, and I knew Kevin and Kristen really well. We were close friends at the time of starting in this. They, they said, hey, before you launch, how about we just do one spread for you just to kind of give you an idea of what we're thinking and we can kind of talk about style and aesthetic and we'll just, we'll just kind of gift this to you if you decide to use us. Awesome. If you don't, no big deal. Uh, it, was, it was phenomenal because their work is so expensive for them to take the time to create it meant they had to think about character development and all kinds of other things and palette. And they did a lot of work that lasted throughout the book in this initial kind of gift to us. Um, but the, actually the spread that you show on your screen, um, in, your, in your PowerPoint, that's actually the one that they first started with. It was kind of their, their idea of this is what we think this whole world could look like. What's funny is Kevin sent me the file one day. Um, he and his wife, Kevin and Kristen, or a team, um, she sketches everything and then he colors it. That's sort of how they, they work in tandem together. That being said, they sent me this file. I had not seen anything of it until that file was done. And when it was done, it came with an email that said, hey, Brandon, let us know what you think. We're super excited, but love to get your feedback. And so as an art critic, <laughs> I went like, well, this and 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 I would change this and this and this. And I, I mean, literally, this it's so humbling to say it's like i it's embarrassing actually the two pages of comments i sent them literally not only almost cost me them working with us it almost cost our friendship 
I was so critical with what I thought they were doing and what I needed to add and my input that um, Kevin wrote me back three days later. They didn't respond to my email initially. And then the next day I called them. They didn't return my phone calls. I sent them a text. Hey, did you guys get my email? Are y'all traveling? I'm, I'm like, I'm like sending out these messages and nothing is coming back. And finally, I got an email from him about three days later. And it said, Brandon, we love you. We love Stephanie and the girls. We love the concept for this book, but we do not think we're a good fit. Um, we've thought about this heavily. We're, we're not actually going to do the book after all. Really sorry. Good luck. And oh I genuinely gosh. thought they were punking me. I'm like, this is a joke. There's no way in the world they're backing out. No way. And so I, I read it and I was like, I was so conflicted because I was so, so dense in my head. I didn't even realize what I had done. My wife comes into the room and I'm like, you gotta read this. This is ridiculous. What are they doing? And I was so frustrated and I was just kind of flipping about, I was like, read this email. Look at this. And she reads it. And of course, my wife, who all the people I can see here are women, at least. I'm sure there, there, might, be men, there might be men. So you guys will appreciate this. Uh, this guy acknowledging women and discernment and women's intuition. Stephanie didn't say anything about her email. Her only statement was, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean, what did I do? And she's like, did you write them an email before this? Is this a response to him? I was like, yeah. She's like, let me see your email. And as I brought the email, like proudly, like, look at this. And she starts scrolling and scrolling and scr And she's like, Brandon, what did, what, did, what did they ask you for? I said, they asked for feedback. She said, Brandon, you're an artist for crying out loud. Here's this beautiful picture they created. They want to know what you think, but they're, what they're really looking for is great job, guys. I love this and this and this. And all you did was told them everything you would change about it. And um, yeah, I did. I, I had to fall on the sword. It took me days to get them to respond. I actually went and found where they were going to be. And I waited at the door uh, at the church they were going to before the church started and literally like stopped them like, guys, please. I'm so embarrassed. I'm, 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 I'm such an idiot. Please forgive me. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was thinking I'm going to be like art director in this process. And Kevin said, Brandon, honestly, like if that's what you wanted, that would be fine. But you told us nothing in there that you liked. And so we thought we must have just missed it all together. And I was like, I love everything you guys did. I just thought this might change. This might change. And he's like, we could take some comments. Give me, give us a few things that you want to, you want to address. Yeah. And one of the things was the color of the shirt. I was like, my girls really think it should be red. And they're like, done. And I think the, the crown needs to be a bit more simple because it was really gaudy. And right. they're like, cool. And I was like, could we really make sure the trees are really distinguishable, the good ones and the bad ones? And they said, yeah, we, those are kind of sketches. And I was like, that's all I really care about. And then I literally said, you guys have complete control. Do your thing. And they shined. And ironically enough, in that process, Kevin and Kristen say, and I, and I it's, it's funny to say this, uh, now you knowing this, but they actually said, Brandon, we feel like Seeds and Trees was our best work that we've ever done because we've never had anybody permission us to actually just do the best we could possibly do without controlling the whole process. And along the way, they asked for my feedback much more than they probably would have before we ever started. Um, I was able to give them some feedback that I thought was important in a couple of spreads where they were challenged or confused. Even in this book that we're working on presently, they came to me and they said, hey, we have this idea. What do you think about animal characters? And I was like, oh, God, no, God, no, please no. My first, everything in me was like, this sounds terrible. This is about, And I was like, guys, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. And they said, well, we want to use human characters, but we also want to use animal characters. And I thought, like, that's even worse. What are you talking about? And then Kristen just said, Brandon, we just kind of thought it would be really fun and playful for children to see a, a giraffe at the picnic table you know, having lunch with the prince and not even explain it. And I was like, yeah, that, that would actually be fun and playful. Why don't we try that? And, and how about, you know, and they start naming these different ideas and I let them do it. And honestly, I love it. I sent it to the publisher. That dummy book was sent to the publisher last week. And one of the main things they loved was that we interacted with like these animal characters and these human characters. 
which I've, I mean, I'm sure it's happened in like, you know, Star Wars and things like that, yeah. you know, but we just created this kind of fantasy world around the book. So no, I can't help yeah. but, but think about the lesson um, that you had in a big way that many of the authors that we that I'm working with now in this group are meeting with their illustrators and they're going over feedback for the first time. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to just make all kinds of comments about everything we don't like. And we forget sometimes the other yeah. end of this is a human being who worked really yeah. hard on our work. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, I, I also work very closely with illustrators and I have another book in the works and, um, the, the one time that I just had no clue what to do with a page and I had no, no perceptions in my mind, I just said, you know, I want kids building a clubhouse and the, the dogs and the other animals are all helping. They're going to, you know, it's all about this clubhouse and no bullying, yeah. but they, they put a, a clubhouse together. And I yeah. just left it at that. And I left the illustrator to just do whatever he thought. When he came back with that, it was amazing. The details yeah. he put into that page. He had one of the dogs wearing a helmet, carrying wood, you know, in his mouth. Yeah. And he had, he had the little boy sitting and like a tipped on a stool. And I thought, I could have never come up with this. I, I yeah. need to do more of trusting the artists that I'm working with because yeah. his genius comes through much better when yeah. I don't tell him everything that's in my brain, because my brain is limited. It doesn't work like his. Yeah. So I think that's yeah, a, and there's a, a lesson. There's a reason we hire those people to do what they do. And I, you know, I going into this book, um, the second one with them, I, nothing, I mean, as much as my initial, like, whoa, that sounds crazy. I, I've said to them at least a hundred times in the recent weeks alone, guys, I trust y'all. Like I, I trust your judgment. You know what you're doing. Do, do your thing like whatever I can do to support and encourage let me do that and um it's not like a flippant thing it's really my heart and and I know that they're going to do the best work they can do is if I if I give them the 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 right to do that and just to right. create so yeah it's it's exciting it's it's scary because you know we do have these ideas in our mind that are really important I mean I'm I'm not writing flippant you know funny little books I'm, I'm writing stuff that really matters in my heart and um the way it's represented really matters to me i'm really passionate about it but finding a good partner in that's in, in an illustrator is it's invaluable yeah um does anyone have another question for for brandon i'm going to um ask one more before we kind of wind down a little bit but i wanted to give another other folks an opportunity as well Anyone? And then I'd ask, how has your family life changed since this started? Oh boy, uh, that's a good question. Mm. I could give you a lot of responses, but um, hmm. um, it's done something really special with my relationship with my kids, for sure. My 10 year old, I have a, I have a 13 year old now, a 10 year old. Uh, at the end of this week, I'll have a six year old. I have an eight year old, so eight and then six. Um, and then our youngest will be two at the end of this year. Um, my 10 year old has got this crazy boost of confidence. This is so funny to say this because at her school, a lot of her friends have my book. And so she's kind of a popular kid because her daddy wrote Seeds and Trees. It's the funniest thing to me because I'm like, I'm the furthest thing from famous, but my daughter, swear to God, she thinks that I'm like, I'm, I'm a superstar. Daddy, I'm in another kid that has your book. And I'm like, daddy, some of these kids like me because they love your book. And it's sweet because she's the most timid of all of our girls and probably the most shy. And so it's been a really sweet gift, even just to see her kind of come out of her shell in a way as a, as, as a, as a result of me just writing something from my heart. But, but really uh, two things that I'd say are, are really most important to me is um, time is, is everything to me. Like the time I get to spend with them. I take my kids to ballet. I take my oldest girls to and from school almost every single day. Um, I did all last year, not just to kind of be a good husband to my wife, which was part of it, but because I could, 
um, that that's something that I've never had the flexibility, even as an entrepreneur in other businesses, I was usually really eight to five driven. And if I worked out of the home, I was at the house, but I wasn't really there. You know what I mean? That's like, I was in business mode all the time. Now I'm, because seeds and trees, I, I don't want to say that I've got lazy. So please don't take it like that. Um, I still have tons of ideas of how to market it better, but it is on autopilot right now in a way. There's a there's a part of it that's on a on a sequence. It's selling regularly on its own. I'm not having to do much to change and adjust ads anymore. Not ret not not every day or anything like that. I used to. I was looking at keywords constantly and. Now it's at a point where it's like, wow, these are working. These words are converting. This ad is working. Um, so I don't have to stress about it. And as a result, I can wake up and just spend time with my kids and not be like, oh, I got to get to work. I got to get something done. So the time, recapturing time has been amazing. It's been such a gift. Um, I have a rule in my house with my girls. I do have an office. I'm actually in my office right now at, that's separate from my home. Um, but if I am at home, my girls know that daddy is always available. That's the rule. If I choose to work out of my house, um, I don't have an office at the house for this very reason. I'll sit on the couch. I'll do some writing. I'll do some accounting. I'll work on some ads. If any of my children come up to me while I'm working, they know that I will stop whatever I'm doing to focus on them. And I'll have my hundred percent attention. If they, um, they they seize it <laughs> all the time, so it's very it's very difficult to be productive. But if I choose, like, well, I'm gonna see the today. I'll hang out with them and we'll have lunch. And I'll make breakfast and stuff like that because we can. It's awesome. Um, but again, about my daughter Elle, my ten year old, she's the sweetest thing. Um, one morning I was at the house working. It was about nine o'clock in the morning. I'd made them breakfast. They were all eating. I put my headphones in and I was kind of listening to some music while I was writing and working on some stuff. And I didn't even notice her. I was, my head was down. And, uh, and I looked up and I see her little feet at the, kind of at my feet level. And I was like, oh, sweetie. I was like, hey, what, what do you need? I took my headphones out and I looked at my daughter and I was like, hey, what do you need? She's like, daddy, I just wanted to give you a hug. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? So I give her this big hug, you know, and I'm like, oh, sweetie, do you need anything else? And she's like, no, I just wanted to give you a hug. And then she like scurried off. I put my headphones in and I went back to work. And about 15 minutes later, she came back in and she stood beside me this time. And I thought, well, she's interested in what I'm doing. I was looking at some pictures about the book. And I was like, I said, do you see this? And she's like, Daddy. I said, what, sweetie? Took my headphones out. Can I give you another hug? I was like, oh, my word. So literally, if you want to know like what's changed about my family, I that morning, I left my house about 1030 to go run an errand before coming back. And I told my wife before I left, I said, I have received 17 hugs this morning <laughs> that I would have otherwise not received if it hadn't been for this book. So um, in receiving those hugs, my daughter's also got those hugs, which is the real, the real gift of all of this. Um, I'm so grateful that I have the opportunity to do what I do. I, I never would have dreamt a year ago launching that I could say that this book is providing for my family of seven but it is. Um, it's not just the, the money that's being made from the sales, but it's open opportunities for me to go and speak and to do other things. And it's, it's unbelievable. And, and it's, I feel like we're just kind of at the beginning still. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's been what's really changed. Just daddy's got a lot more peace. I'm not stressing about stuff as, as much as I used to. Um, this business of writing books has not become stressful. To me, I, I've chose to not allow it to. I was like, this is, it's, it's ridiculous. I have other ways I can earn money if I need to. And so I'm not going to let this become so business focused that I become entrenched into that process. So highly encourage balance and all that and expectations and, and just your heart in, in this space is, you know, I, like I said, I, maybe it's because I'm not as creative or as uh, proficient, but I don't, I've spent the past near the year writing another book that is for men. It's entirely different. Um, and I could have probably launched two or three other children's books in the process, but part of me didn't want to get into this, like, I've got to go to the next one, got to go to the next one, got to go to the next one. Um, and, and so I just kind of pulled back. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to write something that really matters to me that I really feel passionate about. 
and I'm going to just trust the process and that seeds and trees is going to continue and it's going to be okay. And it's done, it's done just great. It hasn't slowed down yet. And so, um, yeah, Does that, that's a very long winded answer. Amazing. No, it's, it's wonderful. Um, I, I, I love all this heart talk. Um, but I have mm. a burning question about yes. your AMS ads, and you talked about <laughs> you uh, talked about when you launched that you spent a lot of money up front, and there are many yes. in this in this um, group who are just getting ready to launch themselves, yeah. um, and we're all thinking AMS ads, and many have tried, and things are not going very well. What yeah. did you do that really? You know, what advice can you provide to them with regard to bids and, you know, what yeah. you did to, to have the success that you have? I'm going to, I kind of went a bit rogue, guys. And I got, I got to be honest with you. Um, I don't have a, I, I could never teach this strategy. I can tell you what I did and I can tell you why I did it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and maybe even to a degree how I did it. But, um, if I say anything that's probably impactful as far as the strategy that's worth thinking through, it's this. <laughs> um, because I feel like I kind of hacked through something that I don't know how I came upon it, but as I was working through what's going on with these ads, I, I started with like six or seven different ads. All of them were manual ads. Um, and, and Amazon meaning they're all keyword driven that I was choosing the keywords. Mm-hmm. Um, I had about four or five that were maybe set at ten, fifteen dollars um, spend every day, and then a couple that were set at like twenty, thirty, forty dollars a day. So that first, it, it took a while, or it took a few days for them to actually start getting impressions in the first place. But when they did, I my I'm trying to think of the a cost or whatever we would refer to it as. Mm-hmm. Um, my my cost of sales, my numbers at the beginning, that month of May was through the roof. It was terrible because I wasn't actually selling books because I didn't have any books to sell. Um, And then even the beginning and going into June launching, it was terrible. I think by the end of June, it was still in the 65% range, Mm -hmm. my conversions. I mean, it was just, it was terrible. By July, they started to go down, but I was also running out of books. And so I didn't have a whole bunch of data that I could trust from that process to say, well, this is what I'm going to do always going forward. So when I got back in stock at the end of uh, or middle of October, which it took three months to get books made and sent from China back to you know, warehouses and all that kinds of stuff. Um, I had to almost start over again. I had ads that were all paused because I didn't have anything to sell. Right. Um, so I turned several of them back on and it, and it, they were okay. But what I realized is that I had in, in most of my ads, hundreds and hundreds of words and just the data alone for me trying to review it was just, it was mind numbing. I and mean, I was going through these, um, one, one of my um, keyword ads had like whatever the max words you could have, 999. I think I had 970 words that I had chosen, <laughs> you know. Where, and, where, did um, you, where did you come up with the keywords and, and what did you start the bids at uh, just as yeah. a, a starting point for you? Yeah, I, because I knew a little bit about SEO, um, with websites, um, I, I did a lot of, this is part of the research prior to, um, I was just searching keywords and seeing what was coming up in Amazon. So, and I did that like before, again, before my book was ever available. Um, so I would search in there books for bullying and see what would come up or Mm -hmm. books on kindness, books about this, books with a hero, books with a heroine and things that were relevant to what I was saying. And then also just simple things like children's books about and, right. and fill in the blank. Um, and then I was just calling that data going, okay, well, these, these 10 books keep coming up every time I type in these kinds of words. Right. And, and these books seem to be doing well, so maybe those words matter. And, and there's no real, I, I wish I could give you the formula, but it was really right. a lot of data. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and so I was just gathering data, gathering data, and literally creating a spreadsheet with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of words, and then variations of those words. Um, Amazon gave you the option, um, like the, I, got, I got some information from someone about misspellings and things like that. So right. I was typing in bully, and I was spelling it B-U-L-L-I instead of B-U-L-L-Y, or bullies with an apostrophe S or an S or an I-E-S, right. and things like that. And, so, and then I also, in our um, 
a product description page, we also put a lot of our keywords in the product description throughout it. So words that were going to be words I was paying to be seen on, right. I also wanted them replicated in my product description. My bids initially, April, were, were 50 to 60, 70 cents. Okay. Um, that was my starting point. Um, I realized very quickly, I would wake up some mornings and my 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 ads had already gone through the budget at like 9 a.m. And I was like, wait a second, what's this? Is I spent $100 in like an hour and a half. And that just right. seemed bump, crazy to me. Um, and so I, I quickly started looking through and going, okay, well, after two weeks, as someone had mentioned, give it a couple of weeks. So I thought, okay, I'll give it two weeks. At the end of two weeks, I went through every ad and I saw hundreds of words that had been clicked on 15 or 20 times that had not sold me a single book. And I just cut them. It's just like, you're gone. <laughs> and I just went through and I eliminated a few hundred words yeah. of the biggest ad. I had a couple ads that I created with just specific keywords, like with 10 or 12 keywords. Um, and it wasn't until about three or four weeks into that process that I started, that I found an automatic ad. And I didn't even know what that was. Right. Where Amazon would pick, you know, words based on their own ideas of your book and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know where all that data comes from, how they create those. I imagine some of it is from product description right. um, stuff. Some of it's part of maybe from what people have searched in order to find your book. Um, I set up an automatic ad and about three or four days into it, started realizing, wow, this automatic ad has a cost that's a, you know, quarter of what all of my keyword ads are right. and and i thought well maybe it was just a fluke and then it just kept happening day after day after day the it was they were performing better than my ads as far as the spend so presently i don't have a single keyword driven ad i have it in months um i don't know that i suggest this and i can't say how and when to flip the switch but for me i realized um at one point I had two, two ads. I had one automatic ad that I'd set up with like a $50 budget for the day. And I had a keyword driven ad with the same amount. I would spend the $50 on the keyword driven ad and I would sell, you know, 20 books or 10 books or whatever it was. But on the automatic ad, I'd sell 30 or 40 books. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Why, why is this one performing so much better than the one that I've specifically written, if right. you will, created for this? And I just started getting less and less inclined to use the keywords that I was. Yeah, I think with. I think by accident you did something that was really beneficial for Amazon by yeah. giving them such a high starting price and mm -hmm. allowing them to put your book in front of so many people. They learned what pe what people were bidding, were clicking through on, and yeah. what things were really valid valid and relevant for your book. So it yeah. made automatic ads really really productive. Yeah, yeah, because I I'm, I've said this in the group on Facebook, and I know not everybody's had the same success or results on their automatic ads as I have. I I know it has, like you just said, I'm sure it has something to do with the process mm -hmm. that I just described and what I went through. Yeah, but I, I I don't know how to map it out for anyone other than say I started with this many words. I started working it down, and the last ad I had that was keyword driven had 17 words. I had gone from 900 and something to 17 because over the course of months of running that ad, I realized these words always work. They convert right. regularly. All the other words, if I had sold one book in two months with it, but I'd spent $20 to do it, I thought, why am I using this? This doesn't make any sense. No one, no one could convince me that just impressions would matter that much. I thought this is, this isn't making business sense. I'm spending all this money to put my book in front of people with this word and they're not buying when they see it. So yeah. I just finally just kind of called them off to the side. And, yeah. And what you're, what you're finding now though is exactly what <coughs> our goal is, Excuse you me. know, with the keyword <clears throat> analysis and stuff that I'm doing for my yeah. book and for others, the goal is to get enough um, momentum and um, search with, within the search terms you have that you get yeah. indexed for those words so that you get the organic traffic. And once yeah. you get the organic traffic, you don't need to pay for ads. No. So that's the thing. I know I, I recently um, exported like your keywords because I have a tool that'll let me put in seeds yeah. and trees 
and export yeah. all the words that you are indexed for, it's you. Yeah. So I would all, love to know they are. I don't even know they are. <laughs> That's I'll a funny it, thing. <laughs> I'll send it to you. And the reason yeah. I did that is because I, I, I always look for the leaders in, you know, what are they indexed for in the areas that where they're doing really well. And yeah. your, your book is in the same category that um, Bobby Hinman's fairy books are in. So mm. I wanted to look at who's number one and who's doing really well and what yeah. are they indexed for because those are probably going to be important search terms for Bobby and her books as well. But yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send you the spreadsheet that shows. That'll be, that'll be so fun. Yeah, because honestly, that I realized I'd read enough to know that that's what was happening. But I, I, the, I what I could say is my first month or so running ads, uh, the impressions I was getting were massive I and mean, I was getting millions of impressions right. because of the massive amounts of words and the amount of money I was putting behind them. Right. Exactly. But now if I were to look at the most recent months where I was running ads in a month, I might get a hundred thousand impressions. Mm -hmm. It's nowhere near what I was getting before. And I don't even think it's that high. Um, I mean, it's, it's infinitely smaller than that, but, but my conversion rate has stayed really, really great, you know? Right. So, yeah, you're My, getting a ton of of organic traffic that you're not yeah. paying for that doesn't register. Yeah. So that's yeah. a big issue there. So yeah. I want to end today on a back to the heart note. And yeah. I'd love to have you share about the book that you're writing for men and just oh, wow. yeah. and let people know where they can find it, when they can find it, and how things yeah. are going there for you. And then we'll we'll let you get back to that beautiful family of yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um yeah, that's awesome. The yeah, this book I'm writing for men is um, I, the way I describe this. It's actually kind of interesting. I have um, I've said to people that seeds and trees is my story, clever, my life, kind of cleverly disguised as a children's book. That's how I usually describe it because um, it is. It's not. I'm the prince in the story. I'm. It's that was me going through that process initially. Um, what's ironic is my editor that I'm working with on this book, uh, for men, she said to me one day, she says, what's that tagline you use about your life cleverly disguised as a children's book? And uh, I said, that's it. And she said, yeah, you know what this book is? This is just your life. And she's like, it's not cleverly disguised. There's no beautiful illustrations to hide behind. It's just, this is you. And it's funny because I actually saw seeds and trees initially as kind of like the foundation. And I was seeing this book as like a branch off of that, if you will. And the truth is, is it's actually reversed. Um, this book I'm writing is more my heart than anything. It's like, this is my, this is what I believe. This is how I think all men should be and should live. And it's a crazy thing to say that. And it's, it's brought up so many of my fears that I've had to, to deal with and, and address in my, in my insecurities of, you know, who am I to tell men what they should do or how they should be or how they should live, or how they should raise their kids or look at business or look at family or anything. Um, but I think, I'm, I think I've got a couple of things figured out that are working really well. Um, and I'm, I'm trying my best to share that with some other guys. Because there, there, there's an epidemic that I see among a lot of men. I, I mentor a lot of young men. And, um, and so many of them are hurting from pain and lost dreams and things that they're already facing. And um, I've got peers, friends of mine, and, and older men than I. Um, I'm 41, but I've got guys I meet with that are in their 60s that I hear so much regret in their turn and what they're sharing about their lives, how they spent them. And, um, so I'm, I'm really trying to write another book that, I mean, my real heart is that this book, like Seeds and Trees, will change the world. Um, I, it's, it's called Man Child. Um, it's a funny, funny idea for a book for men. Um, I'll share the uh, a screenshot of the cover here for, with you. Um, but I, it's, what, I, what I'll say about it is when I first um, sat down with this idea, my wife said, Hey, if you're going to write this book for men, maybe kind of like be seeds and trees, you know, for adults, seeds and trees, you know, 2.0 or, and I really kind of thought that was going to be it. I had actually read a poem by Shel Silverstein called Growing Down. Um, and I even thought about using that for the title because it would tie into the idea of seeds and trees and kind of yeah. going, going yeah. backwards yeah. almost. Yeah. 
being yeah it, and and really instead of growing up which is kind of what we tell men to, you know all the time oh growing down that makes sense um but it's shell silverstein and i didn't want to mess with shell silverstein and, and, and anything that he's done um his book the giving tree is like my favorite my personal favorite children's book um but ironically enough when i first thought of the idea for this book and then thought of the the name man child i thought well that's a terrible idea because that's usually an insult you know most people that call a man a man child are telling him you better grow up you know? um but i went to webster and i on, online and i i saw this beautiful definition and it, the man child's definition is I'm reading this just to make sure I don't quote it wrong, but a man who has the qualities of a child, a childlike man. And I thought, you know, there there are references that are really rude about man, man child. And then there's these. There's this moment where you go, yeah, I actually want to be childlike. I've learned so much from my kids. I learn from my kids every single day. And if I could sustain anything in their childlike wonder and innocence and honesty and creativity, it, as a grown man, I, I'd love to do that. And so um, I'll share this from my phone. It'd be kind of hard to see it, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, this is the uh, the cover of the book. If it's you perfect. can see it. Yeah, it, it, you um, can see it perfectly. Can you see it? So I love this it. Is, this is me, obviously. Um, that's real tears in the eyes, by the way. Um, <laughs> this, this picture that's on that cover is a picture of me when I was six years old. Wow. Um, and if you see that the tagline says, you know, what if becoming childlike makes you a better man? And the, when, when I thought through that, um, six years old was when I first was sexually abused. Um, that was also hitting a time in my life when as a little boy, I thought I was going to change the world. And I, I was, I tell it in the, in the, in the book, I was a kid in Sunday school that would hear the, you know, the, the Sunday school teacher talk about David and Goliath and I'd be like, I think I'm gonna be like David someday. And and she would say sweetly, like, yes, Brandon, you know, you know you're gonna be like David, but so is April and Alicia. And, and she'd name everybody else in the room. And it was weird because in my brain I thought, well that can't be that can't be possible. There was only one David. Mm -hmm. And how could all of us all be so special? Like it wasn't that I didn't want to acknowledge other people being special. But by her kind of making it that we were all special, it made me feel less special. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's something that happens in society now. With everybody being equal, we've almost made we've we've nullified this this thought that there is something unique about me, something creative about me, something I'm meant to do special. And I want my kids to hold on to that. I want my kids to believe that they are uniquely crafted for something that's unlike anyone else. Because I really believe they are. Um, so. In Sunday school, that would happen, and then the following week, I'd go back, and there'd be a teaching about Noah and the Ark, and I'd say, "I think I'd be like Noah." And she's like, <laughs> "Yes, Brandon." And then, like, it didn't matter what the biblical story was or the character was. I was like, "I'm gonna be like him. I'm gonna be like him. I'm like him," because something resonated with like, "I'm gonna change the world." Um, but as I say in the book, and as I heard in my story, my the trajectory of my life started to go down when sexual abuse entered my life, and and to no fault even of the perpetrator, um, and this is hard to say now, but as a, as a grown man and taking ownership, um, so much of the trauma I went through for the 25 years before I spoke a word about it was self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. Like, because I, I could have got healing a lot sooner had I actually just gone to the pain, got therapy and gone through counseling, and I didn't. I just ran from it. I hit it. Um, and it cost me a lot. So, um, the book is meant to um, to kind of reawaken and hopefully to address what I think is really broken in society and Western culture, which is um, there's a, a friend of mine who actually runs a big organization. I won't mention it. No, it's it's a great organization. Uh, he's a really powerful guy, um, but his his organization is very much um, primal screen for guys. You know, kind of like get in touch with a man. You know that kind of stuff. And, and I love it. I've been to weekends like that. I've, I've done that. I've screamed. I've torn my shirt off. I've done all the cool, you know, masculine things to get in touch with that masculine side of me. Um, but I say to him all the time, I'm like, primal screens are not sustainable. Mm -hmm. We're going to lose our voice. And ironically enough, last year, um, his family about fell apart, his wife and his kids and the whole thing. And 
um, it, it just his life just got out of control because of this like all the time. And so I'm trying to honor that space for men of yes, yes, get in touch with that masculine stuff, stand up for your family, protect them, provide, do all that stuff. However, hold intention, this childlike, sweet, caring, friendly, honest, creative stuff, and maybe somewhere in, in there is man child. I don't know. Um, the book is written kind of as a hypothesis, not as a answer. It's more of a question. Um, I, can't, I can't wait to buy it. When do you think it oh, is, when is it going to be available? Um, so I'm releasing this entirely different than I did Seeds and Trees. Um, I'm actually releasing this paperback on Kindle um, initially rather than doing hardbacks. I was going to do that. And I just thought in this case, because I'm so scared, um, there's no sense in me printing thousands and thousands of copies of a book that I genuinely am going, ah, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. um, it's, I feel like I feel confident enough with other children's books that I would print each one of them with, with quantities, believing I know enough about the system that I could make them a success. This is scary. Um, so the, the tentative release date is the middle of October. And I think, I think we'll hit it because um, September, beginning of September, first couple weeks of September, I'll start um, dripping info about it. I'm starting a podcast that I'm going to be kind of documenting a little bit of the, um, of the you know, content from the book as like sort of mm -hmm. weekly episodes, if you will, about different chapters. Um, so mid to late October, I think is the latest. I think we, we should be at. Um, and the easy, I'm the easiest way at the moment where I'm about to launch a website for my, for me personally, I, right now I have, uh, the treasured tree website, but it's more for the children's book stuff. Mm -hmm. This feels a little bit different, although it's under the same umbrella. Um, I've been really encouraged to open like a brandonwalden.com right. thing. So we're, we're building that right now. It's almost done. That'll launch at the beginning of September along with all this. Um, but right now, if you're trying to find me, the easiest way is Instagram, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, just my name, Brandon Walden at Instagram. Awesome. I hope that you will um, narrate your book and make it an audio book. I do. I intend to actually. Yeah. Yes. Because I think there's not anybody else that will be able to put the heart into it that you will mm. yourself. And you've, yeah. got, you've got a great speaking voice. So I'm oh, thank really you. looking forward to that. But my husband is one that will not read a book because he's got ADD and dyslexia. But I know, oh, him, I'm, I know he'll, listen. I love, I love audible. I listen yeah. to books all yeah. the time. Yeah. But I know, I know he'll definitely appreciate the audio, audio version. So this has been incredible. I can't oh, wait thank you for joining us. I will share this video. And if you want to, you know, take clips and, you know, use them for yourself, you can feel free to do that. Thank you. And I will post thank it you. for a replay with your permission. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Well, thank you. And uh, for anybody else who still wants to hang on, if you need specific help or you have an issue, I'm okay with hanging on past 10 if you need to. Thank awesome. you, Brandon. Guys, thank you all. It's been, been a blessing to be with you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Take care, y'all. All right. Wow, what an amazing meeting today. Thank you, Brandon, for joining us, and thank you for joining us. We have some resources I want to make available to you. First and foremost, click to subscribe to this channel in order to get notifications when new things are posted. And we do have a new fall session of Self-Publishing Made Simple Author Work Group that starts on September 30th, 2019. Register for an informational session. You can go to thelittlelabradoodle.com slash event and you'll see events like this one that you can register for at no charge or a free informational session where we'll go through the author work group, talk about the process we follow, and answer your questions. You can also schedule one-on-one -on -one time and free coaching session with me to talk about your specific situation. I hope you'll join us and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.